Hi, I'm Holly Heatley. I'm the lead faculty for Art 101, and this video is about the week five final project. So for the week five final project, you're going to create a gallery focused on the artist of your choice. You may recall that you started working on your final project in the week three assignment. So one of the first things you want to do is review your week three final, uh, your week three assignment. You want to identify the useful information that you have there and incorporate your instructor's feedback. You also want to check the grading rubric for the final project so that you know how you're going to be graded. Then you want to choose four additional artworks from the artist of your choice. When you choose those um, artworks, you want to think about the artist's evolution, um, how his artworks contributed to the um, art movement and how he grew in his personal, how he or she grew in their personal style and um, how you can see their specific region in their artwork. So let's talk about the final project requirements. You have three choices for format. You can write a regular paper, in which case the images will appear in the appendix at the end of your paper. If you write a regular paper, that uh, your paper must be six to eight pages, not including the title page or the reference page. You can create an illustrated paper in which the images will appear throughout your paper. Again, that's six to eight pages, not including the title page or the reference page. And you can create a PowerPoint in which the images are throughout the presentation and that's 16 to 20 slides, not including the title slide or the reference slide. You need or you must have images of all five artworks that you've chosen and you must have the APA formatted references for each of the artworks. You also must have a title page or slide and a reference page or slide. And again, those are not included in the total page or slide count that you see on the assignment <clears throat> page in your classroom. Okay, so moving on, you also need a formal introduction. So if, even if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, this needs to be in paragraph form. It needs to address the movement region and individual artistic style of your artist. You also need a thesis statement. Your thesis statement should be a maximum of two sentences. And a thesis statement should include your, um, the conclusion that you came to about your topic. Again, that is the artist that you've chosen. So the conclusion you came to about your topic and the main points that you'll use to support that throughout your project. For each of the artworks in your gallery, you need to discuss the media, which is the materials, methods, and subjects. And you also must discuss the political, social, or other applicable contextual factors that shape those artworks. In your project, you're gonna discuss symbolism, iconography, or metaphors in the artist's work. So many students find it helpful to discuss that for each individual artwork, but I have seen students who managed to address it well separately, um, either at the beginning or after they've discussed each artwork. So also you're going to discuss how the artist's work relates to their society and how it relates to today's society. So basically uh, you wanna talk about how the artist works artwork relates to their society and how we today relate to it. You also need a conclusion. Your conclusion should be one paragraph. It needs to summarize the main points that you've made and it should restate your thesis statement. So in your conclusion, you should not bring in new information. So um, here, these are your sources. You must have at least three credible sources plus your textbook. So to help you find credible sources in your classroom, there's a link to the UAGC Library Art 101 webpage. You also must have APA formatting throughout your presentation. So again, you're gonna see that on your title page. You must have in-text citations and references. 
Again, here's the link for the papers at six to eight pages, PowerPoint 16 to 20 slides. That's not including your title page or your reference page. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to turn again a moment to the idea of the contextual factors that shaped artworks because students often have some problems or some difficulties with this. Um, so let's talk a minute about this artwork. This is Pablo Picasso's Guernica. So we know that he created this during the Spanish Civil War. This is 1937. He painted or he created this uh, right after the Spanish town of Guernica was bombed by Nazis. Um, and he created this in, um, <clears throat> he created this to publicize um, his reaction to the death and destruction of this bombing. So we know that this was create this um, this artwork was shaped by a very specific event that happened, and it carries with it very specific political message, specifically an anti-war message. So the uh, contextual context here is political. So our first impulse might be to say that it's historical, but we have to remember that. When Pablo Picasso created this, it was a contemporary event. It was a current event. It had just happened. So it was not historical to him. Okay, it was political because he had a political message. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so this is Edvard Munch's The Scream, which many people recognize. So we see this, we obviously have a main image here who, is somewhat isolated from the two people behind him. The man looks upset, maybe anxious. Um, so many people, or it has been said by many art historians that this represents uh, modern alienation, anxiety, <clears throat> um, sort of man's condition in modern society. So in which case the social context would be social. Um, we might also see this in relation to his personal struggles with personal tragedy or mental health, in which case the, the um, context would be his personal historical narrative. You could go with either one of those, whichever one you went with though, you would need to provide a source that backs it up and explains <clears throat> which one you've gone with. So you have choices there, but you need to provide evidence for whichever choice you go with. Okay, so moving on. I want to remind you that you have resources. Obviously you have your textbook. We have the interactives in the class. We have the R101 webpage. We have the writing center. We have Grammarly. We have your instructor. Also, we have library tutoring that I didn't think to put here. We have the writing center tutoring. So if you have any questions, please contact your instructor. I appreciate you watching the video and hanging in there. Thank you very much and have a good day.